Hello, church. My name is Shantae, and today I will be interviewing my pastor and father, uh, Pastor Okoyan, and we're going to be doing this for the second part of the sermon series, How to Maintain Your Christian Faith in a Pandemic. So my first question for you is, is there a difference between a uh, how to maintain your spiritual faith for someone who is new in the faith versus someone who has been in the faith for a long time? Is there a difference in spiritual development? Um, I guess the correct answer would be yes and no. Uh, there is a difference because someone is just a new person in Christ. Whereas when you're talking about someone who is already a Christian for at least a year, it's a little bit different. Let me do this in answering your question by comparing it to a baby that's just born. When a baby is born in the hospital, uh, there is definitely a recognition that in order for that baby to survive, there are four basic things that that baby needs. Mm -hmm. In spite of all of the other things, but these four are very essential. One is the food for the baby to grow. Second is air, learning how to breathe in and out, because if you don't breathe, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, the third is having a home that can take care of that baby. The baby will not remain in a hospital. The baby has to be taken home and therefore needs a home. And the probably last one, which is not essentially necessary right away, of course, First, you want to notice that the baby is actually making sounds. Mm -hmm. They can cry. They can, unintelligible words mm -hmm. or whatever is coming out of their mm -hmm. mouth. But the one, the fourth thing that has to happen to that baby is learning how to talk. Right. So when we look at that example and we appear, uh, apply it to a, a new Christian or to a Christian that's already growing in Christ, they need all four. Right. But they have, to, they have to grow so that they're at certain points in their Christian life. So for a new Christian, for example, uh, a new Christian uh, needs food to grow, just like an older Christian also needs food to grow. We all need fruit, food to sustain us and to grow. And that food for a Christian is the Bible. Uh, a new Christian, like a new baby, needs air to breathe. Uh, just like an older Christian needs air to breathe also, because without breathing, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. Breathing to a Christian, uh, breathing is to a baby as prayer is to a Christian. Mm -hmm. So prayer, learning how to breathe, uh, our method of sustaining our lives as Christians is breathing properly. And that's prayer. Prayer is very essential. So a new Christian needs to learn principles of prayer and daily prayer, moment prayer, ongoing prayer, just like an older Christian does. Now, the baby needs a home to come to, just like a new baby needs a home to come to, an older person also needs a home. The church is the home for a new baby, for a new Christian, and for an older Christian, they need a home. Uh, lastly, need to learn to talk. For a new Christian, that may be a little bit diff more difficult than for older Christians, needing to learn how to talk for a Christian Learning to talk is learning how to share your faith. We call it evangelism. Mm -hmm. Learning how to talk to another person about how to become a Christian. For a new Christian, it's going to be a longer process, but for older Christians, they should already know how to do this. Now, that's not always true, mm -hmm. but that should be the case. So I, I hope I've answered that question. It's in a long roundabout way, but it is the best way to look at it is to say yes and no. There's, there are differences. 
a new Christian starting up is going to need more help. An older Christian doesn't need as much help, but can get in trouble if they get too lax and think they have arrived. I think that was a that's a really good point when you mentioned that they need a home because if not, it's like you're an orphan. If anybody saw a little child just roaming around on the streets, they would think something was wrong. So I think that that's a, that's a really good point that every new Christian as well as an older Christian needs a home place to go. So when we say uh, remain in Christ, what, what do we really mean? Are we talking about something? Is it just one thing? Are we talking about, uh, remaining in the body of Christ? Are we talking about remaining in relationship with him through prayer? What, what do we mean when we say uh, remain in Christ? Well, to remain simply means to stay. Uh, the Greek word is meno, to remain. Uh, sometimes it's used the word abide, to remain. To remain takes a lot of things. I remember one of our ministers, uh, Reverend Mikel Carpenter, preached a message uh, not too long ago before the pandemic, I think. Yeah, I think it was before the pandemic because she's only preached one time since the pandemic, I believe. Uh, She mentioned about 12 things that Christians need to do in order to grow, Mm -hmm. in order to be vital, in order to remain in discipleship. And uh, all those 12 things are really important, and we're going to touch on them, hopefully, as we do this. But like I said, uh, one, of, one of the important things that I believe is if you are a Christian, prayer should be priority. Mm-hmm. And it is priority because uh, to read the Bible, you have to have the Bible in front of you. So to continue to study the Bible, not only do you have to have the Bible, you have to have other books also that can help you. I'm I'm teaching a class right now on how to understand the Bible and how to study the Bible. And we're going to be going through those books that are needed, about seven different departments of books. Mm -hmm. And in each department, you're going to have a lot of books that you know, you can keep going and keep going and keep going. But for prayer, you don't need any book. Now, of course, you know, Shola has been teaching us also on how to pray the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a need sometimes to have the Bible when you're praying. But prayer is something you can do without any book, even without the Bible. Mm -hmm. You can pray. Prayer is simply talking to God. And that is one of the essential things that a Christian needs uh, in order to grow. So that's one of those. And there are a lot of other things that we're going to need, but I would like to emphasize the word discipleship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true discipleship that keeps a person to remain in Christ, doing those things that are necessary. To remain is to have a continuing relationship with Jesus. Just think of it as getting married. There are a lot of people who get married, but they don't develop that relationship, and pretty soon they're going to get a divorce Mm -hmm. because a lot of things are going to come up in it and are going to uh, present difficulties, and if you're not practicing what it takes to develop a relationship, then you're not going to have a solid relationship, a solid marriage. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we can also look at it as being part of a team. If you're part of a basketball team or part of a football team or part of a soccer team, you have to do a lot of things that makes you come together as a team, makes you grow better to become a better team. Mm -hmm. And those things, if you don't do them, pretty soon you're going to find yourself out of place, even in that kind of team relationship. So we're here now, we're talking about team Jesus. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do to remain in relationship with Jesus? We're saying, read his word, it's very, very essential. 
pray to him on a regular basis. As you pray to him, you also develop the ability to become an intercessor. Not only are you praying to Jesus, you're praying for other people as you approach Jesus. Uh, staying in fellowship with other Christians who can help you to grow is also important because we don't see Jesus face to face, but I see my pastor, I see my deacon, I see my Sunday school teacher, I see my cell group leader, and in a pandemic, I see Zoom. Uh, I, I may not be able to relate to those people that I've mentioned on a regular uh, basis, but I can Zoom. Now, we, before we used to have prayer partners that you're praying with on a regular basis, now we have Zoom. So you can still pray with people on the phone. You can still have that kind of relationship uh, through email, whatever, mm -hmm. but it's really important. I, I hope that people can go on our website and uh, watch that message that was preached by Mikhail because I don't have time to go into all of it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, part of it is, you know, evangelism. Part of it is discipleship. Part of it is just reading your word. Part of it is praying. But developing a relationship, every relationship requires work. Right. You cannot just have a relationship with a person uh, without work. I have a, a, a cousin in, in uh, Benin, Republic of Benin, that I just got an email from today telling me that my brother, Dosu, in uh, Maryland should have spoken to me about something. I said, no, we have not, and we speak every week. And then he said, uh, uh, Maybe it's because we're not talking. I say, yeah, it's because we're not talking. We're not having any kind of relationship. I think the last time I talked to you was last year, mm. you know? So uh, sometimes even people who are in our families, if we don't have that personal touch relationship, it's going to go south. And it's going to, it's, that, at least it will not improve. Mm -hmm. And that is the type of relationship we want to have with Jesus. We want to have a daily connection with him to remain in him. Last week, Sunday, I preached and I brought a plant, or two plants actually, and I started cutting the branches from the plant. When I got home, I took the Moringa home because I still wanted to use that. <laughs> when I got home, the Moringa, you will not believe that I just cut it about an hour ago. It looks like it's been cut two days or three days ago. It's withered mm -hmm. because it's not connected any longer to the vine, to the stem where I cut it from. Mm -hmm. And the same has to do with our relationship with Jesus. It is a constant, regular thing that we have to do. Read the Bible, communicate with him in prayer, make sure we're connected with other people who love him, and worship him, and adore him, and make sure that we are also relating his message on a regular basis. That's how we keep our relationship with him. Good. Um, so for most Christians, you still struggle with sin. You know, you sometimes you don't read your Bible like you should. Sometimes you miss church, you know, but that's expected because we're not perfect. But when should a person start to be worried about their salvation or start to to um, really pay attention to their salvation? I think probably the first I remember when I was in high school. Almost 40 something years ago. I remember we had a speaker that came to our school, Baptist Boys High School, Abeokuta, in Western Nigeria. And the speaker said something that stayed with me. Even at that time, I was not even a Christian. Mm -hmm. But what he said st stuck with me. And the motto of our school is nulli secundus. Basically, it means it's Latin that means second to none. 
And he said the reason why we are second to none is because of our prayer life. And I was looking. And for me, it was more the educational status of our school in Nigeria. Most people want to come to our school because it's considered one of the best schools. It's, it's a missionary school and different things. But prayer, you know, maybe because our physics department is strong, our chemistry is, you know, second to none, our literature teacher and all this, you know. But prayer, you know, uh, later on, I began to understand what the man was saying. Uh, so I believe that prayer life is the first sign that something is going wrong with you. If your prayer life is to the point where people have to beg you to pray, or you think about it, you haven't prayed in three days, mm -hmm. uh, or the only time you pray is when you go to prayer meeting, uh, or the only time you pray is when you want to eat your food. <laughs> That's telling you something is wrong. Mm. Because you don't have that clear relationship with Jesus or you are not excited to communicate with him. So that's one sign that you're in trouble. Another sign that you're in trouble, of course, is uh, when you miss fellowship and it doesn't matter to you. Um, how do I know that I am really not in connection with my family? Is when I don't really have communication with my family. And that's really important for a Christian. The devil can break you if you're just one stick. If you're alone, you're one stick and you can easily be broken. Mm -hmm. But when you're with other people, you become several sticks together. It's very hard for the devil to break it. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for Superman. It's very hard for the rock. <laughs> to break several pieces together. Mm -hmm. It'd be easy for me if I have a, one piece of paper, it'd be easy to just tear it up. Mm -hmm. But the more they get more, mm -hmm. more layers, the more it's not as easy to break. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy to tear until you get to a certain point where it's taking you I have power, yeah. <laughs> but this is getting really difficult now. You see, yeah. the more you multiply, the more they are together, the more you have more than one layer, the more it is difficult to break. This one, I can't break it. Mm -hmm. That is the power of corporeity, the body. That is the power of the body of Christ. If we are together, if and it doesn't mean that we have to be in one place, especially in time of COVID, right. that we have to be in the same place. But it means that we have to stay together. And we have provided every opportunity. At least people from Village Baptist Church <laughs> cannot use this as an excuse. We have provided many ways for you to stay in community. Mm -hmm. Zoom on Wednesday. Zoom on Fridays, every Wednesday and every Friday, we get together, we greet one another, we share prayers, uh, we pray for one another. That's part of you staying close to Christ, remaining in Christ, and knowing that your Christianity is still in check. Mm -hmm. You're still doing what you're supposed to do. But when you begin to have those problems, then you need to begin to begin to be concerned. And we need to learn to talk, to share the gospel. We call it evangelism. When you're not doing it, that is also a sign of trouble. Mm -hmm. And just need to be aware you know, of those three areas that I wanted to point out. Now that I tore my notes, <laughs> I may not be able to see what's in it. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
if you've been at least been in this church, we've heard the expression once saved, ever saved or once saved, always saved. We believe that you can't lose your salvation once you truly have it. So so then why should anyone be worried about their salvation? Why should any Christian, should I say, be worried about their salvation? It's a good question. I truly believe that. I've said that. I teach that. Uh, many people in the church know I'm a Calvinist. <laughs> I, I strongly believe in the points of Calvinism. Uh, but I also believe that there's something unique about the Christian faith. That, well, let, let me put it this way. A few years ago, I was invited to the White House when uh, President Bill Clinton was president. And I was asked to join a group of lawyers, doctors, teachers, pastors. They call us professionals. And we were to advise President Clinton about the crime bill. And we were in one particular room and the speaker at that time was from the uh, fire and arms, whatever, uh, department of the government. And he said to us, I'm going to pass out $200 bills. And I want everybody to look at them and then be able to tell me which one is real and which one is fake. He said, but don't do like the previous group that I met with. I passed out these $200 bills, and when they were supposed to be returned to me, they only returned the fake. <laughs> so uh, it, I said all that just to say that it, that cannot be fake if there is no real. Mm-hmm. In other words, people, there is nobody in America that is going to try to pass out a $3 fake $3 bill. Mm-hmm. I mean, one denomination. Not three $1 bills, yeah. <laughs> not one $2 bill and one dollar bill, but a new one that they made up that says $3. <laughs> Nobody is going to be that stupid mm-hmm. to pass it around. Why? Because we don't have any $3 currency bill. Right. We only have the $1 bill, the $5, the $10, the $20, the $50, the $100, and you know the others, most of us don't see them, $500, $10,000. We don't see those. Uh, they only use them for certain uh, transactions. But we all see those. So if you're going to see any fake dollar bill, you're only going to see $1, $2, uh, $5, and two dollars is not that common, right. you know. It's, they're not basically like co- collection items. Uh, so I'm saying that to say that there are always going to be fake Christians because they are real Christians. Okay. So is once saved always saved? The answer is yes. If you're truly saved, right. okay. if you're not truly saved then it is not true. But how do you know that you're truly saved? You're not truly saved just because you accepted Christ, because there are a lot of people who believe, but they are not saved. The devil believes there's Jesus, but he's not saved. Mm -hmm. So just believing doesn't make you a Christian. You know, if you look at that passage we use in Romans chapter 10, Verses 9 and 10. It talks about confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. So if you confess Jesus is Lord, you don't confess something you don't believe in. So if you believe Jesus is Lord, is he always going to be Lord in your life or just in certain situations? So the answer is, Yes, he's always going to be Lord in all situations if he is Lord, if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. So this is really important. 
Once saved, always saved, only if you're truly saved. And if you're truly saved, there should be some signs that follow you until you die. You know, to be saved doesn't mean something that happens for one year or two years or three years. No, it's forever. Does it mean, like you said, you're going to sin? Of course, the Bible knows that. That's why the Bible says, if you say you have no sin, you make God out to be a liar. And the truth is not in you, mm -hmm. you know. But if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if, if we are going to claim that we're Christians, we cannot continue in sin. We may fall into sin, but we're readily willing to be, to repent, mm -hmm. to be forgiven, and to be brought back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like when you're fighting. It's not over until you can get up. <laughs> right. If they knock you down, mm -hmm. the referee will count. One, <laughs> two. You can stand up at any time of the count. Mm -hmm. But if you don't stand up at all at any time of the count, you're out. Right. And a lot of Christians say, yeah, I'm just behind right now. Do you know when Jesus is going to come? Nope, right. Do you know when you're going to die? <laughs> you're going to die not prepared. And uh, it doesn't matter what the preacher says about you in your, in your eulogy. Right. It's not going to change anything. If you're not saved, you're not saved. If you're not remaining in Christ, you're not remaining in Christ. And, and it is very clear that Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. I know them and they follow me. Okay? So sometimes we are very quick to jump to you know, no one can snatch them out of my hand. Mm -hmm. And we forget the rest that Jesus said. He said, they know me. They hear my voice, and they also follow me. That's why I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. No one will be able to snatch them out of my hand. If a person said, I'm a Christian, but I have allowed the devil to take me away, am I saying that I'm still a Christian? As long as you're still in the devil's camp, you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. I had an Old Testament professor, Dr. Graham. And he will come to class, put his feet on the blackboard. That was when we used to use the blackboard. <laughs> uh, and start singing. The devil in me, we can't agree. Glory, hallelujah. He hates me, I hate him. Glory, hallelujah. He had me once, he let me go. Glory, hallelujah. He wants me again, I will not go. Glory, hallelujah. That should be the song of the Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil is not going to ever leave us alone. He's going to try everything he can. But we have to say, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we can say, he wants me again. I will not go. Glory. Hallelujah.